reactions of ethers. Ethers do not have a really rich chemistry. They make excellent solvents, but there are a couple of reactions of which you should be aware. Acid promoted cleavage is where you have an ether with a halo acid and we end up with two equivalents of the alkyl halide. Autooxidation is where an ether like diethyl ether will react with oxygen in the air to form an ether hydroperoxide very reactive compound that tends to explode for this reason it's really important to always check the use by date on your ethers don't use ethers that are expired let's look at the mechanism for acid promoted cleavage this works with HBr or with HI, but not HCl or HF. For instance, diethyl ether treated with excess hydrobromic acid will yield two equivalents of ethyl bromide and, of course, some water. The first step is proton transfer, where the ether acts as a base and takes a proton from the halo acid. This produces a bromide ion left over from the acid, as well as the protonated ether with an oxonium ion in the center. This protonated ether, rather this alcohol, is now a good leaving group. In the second step, the bromide ion does SN2 attack on the alpha carbon, and an alcohol leaves. This produces one of our equivalents of ethyl bromide plus ethanol. The ethanol produced then does proton transfer, taking a proton from another equivalent of the acid. This is why we need excess acid. This kicks out yet another bromide ion. and makes the protonated alcohol. And that water is, you guessed it, a good leaving group. In the fourth step, we get SN2 attack again with the bromide attacking the alpha carbon of the protonated alcohol and the water leaving. To give us our second equivalent of ethyl bromide and our water. Of course, there are some things to be aware of in acid promoted cleavage. One, the degree of substitution on the ether plays a role in the mechanism. If your ether is tertiary, SN2 is sterically prohibited, and the mechanism will be SN1. If the ether happens to be an aerial or vinyl ether, you will not get substitution. To see this in action, let's take a look at 4-tbutoxy-3-octene with excess hydrobromic acid. First, we get proton transfer from the acid to the ether. 
The resulting protonated ether contains an alcohol which is a good leaving group. But we can't have nucleophilic attack. This proton transfer does, however, spit out a bromide ion, which will be important later. But the next step is going to be SN1, where the alcohol leaves like this to produce an enol and a tertiary carbocation. We will then have nucleophilic attack by the bromide on the carbocation to give us our t-butyl bromide. The enol is also going to undergo acid-catalyzed tautomerization, where the pi bond acts as a base and takes a proton. Since we're in um, acid, there should be plenty of hydronium around to act as a proton donor. And of course, the more stable tertiary carbocation is formed. In the next step, a lone pair on oxygen turns into a carbonyl pi bond. Now we just need a base to come along and deprotonate this oxonium. And since we're in an acidic solution, we have plenty of water being that water is the solvent. And we end up with a ketone. So, we end up with the tertiary alkyl bromide and the ketone. The ketone comes from the alkene fragment. In ether autooxidation, slowly over time, Ether reacts with atmospheric oxygen to form ether hydroperoxides, which explode. Let's have a look at the mechanism for ether autooxidation. In the first step, some initiator, some free radical present in your lab or in the air, performs hydrogen abstraction. This creates a radical on an alpha carbon of the ether. In our first propagation step, the ether radical couples with a molecule of dioxygen, which has a di-radical resonance structure. Those are the resonance arrows for dioxygen to form the di-radical. And it produces this peroxy ether compound. In the second propagation step, the peroxy ether we formed does hydrogen abstraction on another ether molecule to generate our ether hydroperoxide. And another ether radical to continue the chain reaction. Now, the overall reaction will be the sum of these two steps. So we can cancel things that occur on both sides. We can cancel the earth ether radical and the ether peroxide. And we have diethyl ether plus O2 yields ether hydroperoxide. And I guess we should just show that oxygen for completeness. Of course, there's a termination step as well, where two of our ether radicals couple, and that ends the chain reaction. Because the ether hydroperoxide can explode when heated, you should never use expired ether.